This week's presentation will cover the material in Chapter 5, Unemployment Compensation Taxes. The learning objectives of this chapter are to define employer and employee under the Federal Unemployment Tax Act, or FUTA, to identify taxable wages under FUTA, to compute FUTA tax, the pseudo credit against the tax, and applicable credit reductions, to describe the experience rating system used by state unemployment compensation funds, and to complete the reports required by FUTA in the states. First, let's cover the basics of unemployment insurance. The goal of unemployment insurance is to provide individuals who are involuntary unemployed with partial income payments. The person seeking unemployment compensation must register at an employment office, have a certain amount of earnings in a designated time frame, and must be available and actively looking for employment. This is a combined federal state program that operates within federal guidelines under federal law. First, let's talk about FUTA. FUTA is unemployment insurance that was introduced on a federal level in 1935 as part of the Social Security Act of 1935. Most payments last for 26 weeks, but may vary depending on the state. Workers have the option to apply for extended benefits for an additional 13 weeks upon approval. And the Department of Labor oversees the state unemployment insurance programs to ensure the states comply with federal guidelines. Now let's talk about SUDA. SUDA weekly pay received by a worker varies based on state calculations and the earnings during the base period. In most states, the base period is the first four quarters of the last five calendar quarters before the claim of unemployment benefits. The state also puts a maximum limit on the amount of benefits an individual can receive. Who is covered under FUTA? Private employers are subject to FUTA if they employ more than one worker on one day in each of 20 weeks during the current year or the year before or if private employers pay total wages of $1,500 or more during any quarter of the calendar year or the year before. There are special rules for agricultural workers and domestic employees. For household employees, such as a nanny or an in-home nurse, employers are subject to FUTA if employees are paid $1,000 or more in a, in a calendar year, Farm worker employers are subject to FUTA if they pay $20,000 or more to employees or employ 10 or more farm workers for some part of a day for at least 20 weeks of the current year or the preceding year. So how is the employer-employee relationship determined under FUTA? The IRS uses the common law principle to determine if an individual is an independent contractor or an employee eligible for unemployment benefits. The IRS no longer uses the 20-factor test to determine if an individual is an employee. And this information is also covered in the supplement to the text document. The factors have now been combined into three categories, behavior control, financial control, and relationship of the parties. So how does SUDA determine the employer-employee relationship? Most states use the ABC test to determine if an individual is an employee or an independent contractor. If any of the following conditions apply, the worker is considered to be an independent contractor. The individual must be free from control or direction of the hiring company when performing work or performing work under a contract. The service performed is outside of the normal course of business or is performed outside of all normal business locations. The individual is normally engaged in an independent trade, occupation, profession, or business. When an employee works across state lines, the state that provides the suit of benefits will need to be determined. Typically, workers are covered by the unemployment laws where the work is performed. However, there are four tests to determine the state that should pay the unemployment benefits. First is the localization of service. Are the services performed in one state or temporarily in another state? 
Secondly is the base of operations. Where does the employee begin work or perform tasks relevant to their job? Third, discretion and control. Does the employee work in the state where responsibilities are directed and controlled? And last, residence. Does the employee perform services in the state where they live? Reciprocal coverage for SUDA is used when the localization tests discussed on the last slide do not determine the state that should cover employee unemployment benefits. Most states allow all states to enter into reciprocal agreements. States sign agreements that states unemployment benefits are to be covered by a particular state. All states with the exception of Connecticut, Kentucky, Mississippi, and New York participate in reciprocal agreements. Now let's talk about the wages that are subject to feeder taxes and the payments that are exempt. Employers are responsible for paying feeder tax at the rate of 6% on employee wages up to $7,000 per calendar year. Exempt wages include fringe benefits. This includes meals and lodging, employer contributions to health plans, and reimbursement for qualified moving expenses. Group term life insurance payments, employer contributions to retirement accounts such as 401k, and dependent care payments to employees. Now let's talk about the SUDA credit. FUDA allows for a credit against FUDA taxes, also known as the SUDA credit, up to 5.4% if employers pay state taxes on time under an approved state unemployment program. This credit means that employers pay an effective FUDA tax rate of 0.6%, which is 6% minus 5.4%, at a maximum amount of $42 per employee per year. When the total credit is taken of 5.2%, the remaining 0.6% is paid to the federal government. If the employer is late paying state unemployment tax, the credit is reduced to 90% of the amount that was paid late. Here's an example of the suitor rate credit calculation. If a state's suitor rate is 4%, the effective feudal tax will be 2%, which is 6% minus 4%. If a state's SUDA is 8%, the effective FUDA tax will be the minimum rate of 0.6% because the maximum credit is 5.4%. Now let's take a look at a FUDA calculation example. If an employee has a paycheck of $400 and year-to-date earnings of $3,000, the employer owes FUDA tax on the entire paycheck. If SUDA tax is 5.4% or higher and is paid on time, an effective FUDA tax rate of 0.6% will apply. In this case, FUDA tax would be $2.40, which is $400 times 0.6%. So now let's take a look at another FUDA calculation example. If an employee has a paycheck of $450 and year-to-date earnings are $7,200, year-to-date earnings exceed the threshold of $7,000 by $200 the employer has to pay FUTA tax on $250 of his $450 paycheck due to year-to-date earnings exceeding the threshold of $7,000. If SUDA tax is 5.4% or higher and is paid on time, an effective FUTA tax rate of 0.6% will apply. In this case, FUTA tax will be $1.50, which is $250 multiplied by 0.6%. The SUDA credit can be reduced due to late payments. The employer must file the annual return and make timely state contributions in order to be eligible for the maximum 5.4% SUDA credit against the FUTA tax. When the employer is late paying the state contribution, this credit is reduced to 90% of the amount paid late. So here is an example. An employer has total annual FUTA tax due for $5,000 and a SUDA tax due of $3,000. $1,000 of the SUDA tax obligation was paid late. The credit against the FUTA tax and the net amount of FUTA tax due is calculated as follows. The credit is 90% of the amount paid late, which is 90% multiplied by $1,000, which equals $900. The net FUTA tax due is $5,000 minus $900, which equals $4,100.
Now let's talk about a FUTA credit reduction state. This is when a state has borrowed loans from the federal government so it can pay unemployment benefits and occurs when it is late in repaying the loan. When states take off federal unemployment trust fund loans from the federal government to pay unemployment benefits, there are specific due dates that must be met. If the state has outstanding loan balances on January 1st for two uninterrupted years and the full amount of the loan is not repaid by November 10th of the second year, the future credit rate is reduced for employers until the loan is repaid. The reduction amount is 0.3% for the first year the state is in a credit reduction state, 0.3% for the second year, and 0.3% for each year afterwards if the state has not repaid the loan in full. So in order for states to receive the maximum pseudo credit of 5.4%, the state law must also have an experience rating system that is compliant with federal law. The aim of the experience rating system is to rate employers' experience in paying unemployment insurance. This means the less unemployment benefits workers have received results in a lower unemployment insurance tax rate for the employer. The experience rating system uses, uses formulas to measure an employer's experience with unemployment. There are four different formulas used. The reserve ratio formula, the benefit ratio, the benefit wage ratio, and payroll variation formulas. There are also state tax evasion schemes that employers have tried to use to avoid paying state unemployment tax. The first is pseudo dumping. This occurs when employers purposely misclassify employees as independent contractors to evade and paying state unemployment taxes. Next is creating shell companies. These are alter ego companies that are created and subsequently closed after a lower tax rate has been established. To report annual federal unemployment taxes, Form 940 is used. Along with state unemployment taxes, FUTA taxes provide the funds to pay unemployment compensation to individuals who have lost their jobs. Only employers pay FUTA tax, and these taxes do not apply to employee wages. The first $7,000 paid to each employee during a calendar year is subject to FUTA tax once payments that are exempt from the tax are subtracted. So how do companies know if they are required to file a Form 940? If the answers to one of the following questions are yes, the employer must file Form 940. Were wages paid in the amount of $1,500 or more in any calendar quarter during 2018 or 2019? Were there one or more employees for at least part of a day in any 20 or more different weeks in 2018 or 2019? This question applies to all full-time, part-time, and temporary employees. If the company is not liable for future tax for 2019 because payments to employees were not made, box C in the top right corner is checked in the top right corner of the form and part seven is signed and filed with the IRS. If the employer won't be filing form 940 in the future due to business closure or because wages were stopped, box D is checked in the top right corner. Form 940 also has due dates when the form must be filed and when taxes must be deposited. The due date for filing Form 940 for 2019 is January 31, 2020. However, if the employer deposited all future tax when it was due, they have until February 10, 2020 to file. So now let's talk about when the future tax deposit is due. Feeder tax covers a calendar year, however, employers may have to deposit feeder tax before the return is filed. If your feeder tax is $500 or more for the calendar year, a deposit must be made for at least one quarter. It is encouraged for employers to file Form 940 electronically, however, mailed forms are accepted at different addresses depending on the state filing the form. So here are the due dates to deposit future tax. If your undeposited future tax is more than $500 on 
March 31st, you must deposit your tax by April 30th. If your undeposited future tax is more than $500 on June 30th, then you must deposit your tax by July 31st. If your undeposited future tax is more than $500 on September 30th, then you must deposit your tax by October 31st. If your undeposited future tax is more than $500 on December 31st, then you need to deposit your tax by January 31st. So how do employers deposit future tax? Electronic fund transfer, or EFT, must be used to make all federal tax deposits. An EFT is made using EFTPS, the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System, at the following website, www.eftps.gov backslash EFTPS backslash. If the business is new, the IRS automatically will pre-enroll the business in EFTPS when the company applies for an employer identification number for tax filing purposes. Same day wire payment options are also available when a business does not submit a deposit by EFTPS by 8 p.m. Employers also have the option of filing an amended return. A 2019 Form 940 can be used to amend a return previously filed for 2019. If amending a form from a previous year, that year's form must be used. The following steps must be followed when filing an amended return. A paper return is used to amend Form 940 when filing electronically. Check the amended return box in the top right corner of Form 940, page 1, Box A. Fill in the amounts that should have been on the original form. Sign the form and attach an explanation why the form is being amended. And file the amended return using the without a payment address, even if a payment is included. Here is an overview of the sections included on Form 940. Part 1 is SUDA information. Part two is where the employer calculates future tax before any adjustments. Part three is where total payments are reported that are made to all employees. Part four is where the payments that are exempt from future tax are reported. Part five is where the employer calculates the total payments made to each employee in excess of $7,000. Part six is third party designation. This section should be filled out if an employee or tax preparer needs to discuss Form 940 with the IRS. Part 7 is a signature. This is where the tax preparer signs the form. If a credit reduction applies to the employer state, this amount needs to be entered on Schedule A on 9-11. Suited requirements vary by state. An example of California is given in the text for reference. The lecture for week six. Please contact your instructor with any questions you may have about the material covered in this lecture or the assignments that are due this week.